Well, good morning and welcome to episode 22 of the Great Northern Sex Cast. Hello, Colleen Bertino. Good morning. Hey, Megan. Hello. Thanks for coming in. Of course. Yeah. So um, just out of curiosity, this is a weird way to start, but we talked about this last week. Did either one of you ever watch that movie trailer I sent you that we talked about last week? Did you I did not see it until late. But okay. I am going to watch it. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because just if you get a chance, check out the trailer. I'm just dying to see what you guys think. Yeah, definitely. And I believe I posted the act, the link to the actual film itself on the Great Northern Sex Cast okay, cool. page. I think it's really good. And and it's we, we talked last week, and we're going to talk to you about the adult um, movie industry because there's a couple things that happened in this last week. Um, and I there's some good discussion points on that. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys check it out. We'll talk about that um, later on. So tell me real quick before we dive in. We've got a lot. And, you know, Carol Brady a.k.a. Florence Henderson, has been real busy lately. So we're going to start our new segment with that. But before we get to that, we'll preview next week. We have Brandon, the male exotic dancer, coming in. Mm -hmm. I am like, you know, I said, I think I can make that one. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can manage that one now. I, and, and, and in honor of that, I did uh, locate... Um, uh, and in honor of you know, Mother's Day this past uh, weekend, I noticed that the- Did somebody uh, get you a stripper for Mother's no, Day? No, but, oh, uh, but okay. Channing Tatum and all the folks from Magic Mike sent out, um, uh, uh, did uh, Mother's Day cards. Sweet. And I'm like, that is social media done spectacularly. I said, okay, I got to take some notes here. <laughs> How to do the social media. <laughs> I go, it, yeah, abs. Abs is social media, I guess. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. if your Facebook admin looked like Channing Tatum, then we could try that too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would work as well for us. <laughs> yeah, there's that. I think you guys, we should get some, you know what I've been thinking would be funny is, um, and I think, I think the audience would really like this too, is get some just fun snapshots around the warehouse, like the little area where you make the custom cute stuff for the parties and everything else just take some snapshots oh, and yeah. let's put those up inside fantasy gifts i think that'd be so cool oh yeah sure. we could take it in fact is uh you know art is happening right now as long as you consider foam penises on a stick art but i do <laughs> <laughs> I they everything's art everything's nowadays. art because we have uh, uh bachelor seasons coming up and folks are uh well yeah, once again and i know i've mentioned this before but when you've got gasoline under three dollars you've got money to spend <laughs> on other things yeah and i think that the bachelor season is just going to be uh you know now until about october is going to be spectacular for sure for sure um and that's where that you brought up gas prices that's going to come up here in our new news <laughs> segment again because it affects something else believe it or not what effect does gas prices have on sex Ooh, more on that in just a moment um yeah so how about what's going on in general at fantasy gifts uh, we have even more stuff in, uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of stuff from Pipe Dream, lots of stuff from uh, East Coast News. Uh, it is d d more and more pallets of stuff. Uh, although I have to admit, I've been ignoring it a little bit because I've been battling the elements. I'm attempting to put a garden in the back of the warehouse. How's that? Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, I have two raised beds back there, and usually the critters and the marsh grasses go after it. So, I, after the podcast today, I'm going to go battle the gardens and attempt to plant things. Is so? Is this like the the family Fantasy Gifts Community Garden. It is. We try and uh, uh, a couple years ago we did spectacularly. I mean, which is tomatoes and cucumbers and uh, onions and just I mean peppers, and then the critters found it. Oh, bastages! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm gonna. So I gave up last year. There was a lot going on, but I'm like, that's it. I'm not gonna be defeated. <laughs> So last week I put in 2,400 pounds of dirt. This week I'm going to put in the damn veggies. So that's my own personal. I mean, I know it has nothing, you know, well, many of them are phallic shaped. So maybe, you know, that, well, that ties in. Hello. But the. <laughs> Before um, there were dildos, there were cucumbers. And uh, <laughs> we are uh, finishing up the uh, East 7th in uh, Fridley uh, remo uh, well, you know, remodels. Oh, turning out so pretty. I love it when the picture in my head turns out to be reality. Yay! Oh, so, so redecorating and Fridley Star. Isn't Fridley where they like butt plugs so much? Uh, well, yes, the tails. Yes, yes, yes. Tails? yes, yes. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. they, they really like that. So the uh, new things are going on over there. And we're uh, going to work on Burnsville, make it all pretty for uh, uh, Jessica when she comes to visit. Jessica Drake. Uh, I'm very excited by that. I'm like, hey, well, this gives me a, a reason to uh, make things pretty. And mm -hmm. I, well, my my house is done, so I have to do Maybe something to start on the store. That's, that's hysterical. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, I can't. I like, love to decorate. You do realize now that we have to have some pictures of the fantasy gifts garden now too. So well, we, I, yeah, how my garden grows, we'll figure it out. It might be a lot of me swearing. <laughs> well, and I, I think we could. You know how you put the stakes with what everything is. I think we could decorate those, don't you? Oh, I definitely. I mean, maybe we'll get uh, Misty to make me some uh, custom. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, plant markers. Oh, do like scare penises. Exactly. <laughs> Keep with the little little animals away. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. I do want my daughter to help me with the garden, so oh. we might have to. <laughs> I had to have her, I brought her into the office yesterday because she's doing this thing for school, a solar oven, and we wanted to get boxes because she needs, and I'm like, okay, we're going to go look at the boxes, but we're going to come in and you're not going to look behind you. You're going to look f- straight ahead because according to the law, you can watch all the people on TV get killed all you want and people get beat up but if you see a fake penis you're going to be scarred for life and i of course got the oh my god mom <laughs> but no follow the law she just looked forward and then i turned her around and sent her the other way but uh it, yeah but i need to have her helping in the garden she needs to know where food comes from yeah that's a great mm. idea and it, who knew that it grew in the fantasy gifts warehouse it, it certainly does <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So um, Florence Henderson has been in the news and she wrote a, a memoir and that's what a different media outlets are, are picking up different pieces and what a hoot. She's like 80 already. Oh yeah. And she looks amazing. I mean, just, I do think she's had some work though. One of the videos, it's like her mouth, there's this, there is something strange, a little bit Joker like, you know, <laughs> have you seen it? Did you, you know what I mean? Have you seen her yeah, recently? I, yeah. Either that or she needs a, you know, a few more cheeseburgers. She's just too damn thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause that just, can make you suck in your face too. Yeah. But mm-hmm. God, she's, she's so hysterical. But the, the latest one was that she um, got called out on the fact that she, and she mentioned this in her book. So it's totally fair game. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. like, you know, a gotcha journalism kind of deal. They said to her, um, so we understand that former New York mayor, Michael Lindsay gave you crabs and she, she was so funny. She looks at him and says, thank you for mentioning that. And she's like, there's a whole book and you know, you brought this yeah. up, but yeah, she did. And, and she described the story and why is it funny to see Carol Brady describing a, about with crabs? She had no idea what it was. And I guess he sent her flowers, but uh, that was pretty much the last roll in the hay with him. I would, <laughs> I would hope think so. so. You don't want any extra critters. No, 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 no critters. Although I did embarrass myself greatly um, in uh, uh, when I was working as a cook, because my grandmother, being Italian, tends to put S's on the end of a lot of things. Okay, thunders, lightnings, and so she makes crab spaghetti. And of course, I turned to the other cooks <laughs> and asked if they'd ever had crabs. And I just looked and I said, that didn't come out right, did it? And when you're, like, when you're 15 or 16 years old, oh my God, did I get crap for months? Because there's nothing more evil in a kitchen, let me tell you. Oh my God. Well, that reminds me too. I mean, years ago, um, one of my bo- <laughs> my boyfriend um, was at work, uh, architect, and um, his boss, a, a female, leaned over you know, the drafting table because they were trying to solve some sort of a problem and a plan. And he looked over and he saw one crawling across her eyebrow. And I mean, okay, think about this workplace and HR, you know, kinds of issues. He, he jumps up. Oh my God. And she's like, what? And he's like, well, you have, and, and he didn't want to say a crab because number one, you're admitting, you know what they look like. Oh, number two, right? <laughs> right. I mean, there were so many issues with that whole situation, mm-hmm. but luckily it all turned out fine. And she went immediately to get that dealt with. Mm-hmm. I would hope so. That and seems I- the creepiest out of all the STDs, I have to say. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Because uh, the fact that it could get from you're growing to your eyebrow and you not notice is also fairly entertaining, but I have to admit that just, I don't have, you know, I don't, I I might have to go to Wikipedia. (laughs) God, can you guys believe how, how Wikipedia has just completely taken off in the last decade? Like it used to be kind of like, okay, whatever. And now it's, it's like practically what I go to all the time. What yeah, I mean, if, if you're not, if you're not, you know, particularly, in, you know, if, if you don't need to cite anything, <laughs> if you're not doing a bibliography, if you just need something real quick, yeah, you go right there. Oh yeah, because <laughs> it's the first thing that pops up when you go to the Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and do you know that there's a boobpedia now? A b- boobs. Boobpedia. Yeah, it's and there, I found that when I was researching for the show today. There's also a porn version of an IMDb. Mm-hmm. Oh, that we know. Yeah, yeah. we use yeah. frequently. Well, and <laughs> one of the results when I was looking for something, Boobpedia came up. I didn't, I didn't investigate it, but it's out there. Oh. So FYI, in case you are motivated, I'm gonna have to investigate because I'm like, is it different types of boobs? Is it famous people, but and just a boobs? page about their boobs? Like, I don't know. Uh, here's Angelina Jolie. Zboob. <laughs> well, I'm thinking. How would you, you know, ever? Prove I it? mean, you could have like, you know, would that be like Penispedia? I mean, how mm-hmm. many, where, where, where does this go? On, we should know? buy that domain if if it, if it's available. <laughs> I, I'm right now. Get on GoDaddy. I'm telling you right now. Mm-hmm. So you're looking that up. I'm going to bring up something. Do you guys know who uh, Courtney Stodden is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was the child that married the actor 
who really likes Daisy Duke shorts right. and shipper heels. <laughs> yeah. 30 year age difference. Uh, she was on couples therapy. Um, so there's a sex tape coming out. Uh, she's got a sex tape. And so they're in the middle of the dance where she's saying a trusted friend took it from me and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she was trying to, you know, bring legal action against uh, vivid entertainment to not release it. And so all of this is all getting reported on, reported on, reported on. And finally she said, fine, go ahead and release it. But it has to go to charity, the proceeds to animal rights and children with cancer. Mm. So sex tape for charity, hmm. right? And then there's a famous um, sex tape broker, the guy that gets his hands on all this stuff and makes everybody famous and gets rich from it. He came out and said, this is completely and totally choreographed. What do you think? It is. It's such a scam. Mm -hmm. The thing is, Vivid would not have announced they had the tape without permission. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is illegal for them to release the tape. And Vivid is one of the top in, in just, um, adult uh, movie makers, they have to follow the rules. Yeah. Everyone's looking at them, you know, like us, we're mm -hmm. under a microscope. So the idea that they would, would illegally try to distribute something without someone's permission is ridiculous. So all those people who are like, I think there's been some, the uh, Farrah Abraham's backdoor teen mom, she did the same thing. She was like, Oh no, it was just a personal tape that wasn't supposed to be released. And I'm like, a personal tape you made with a professional porn star huh. that you are now raking in the money from. This is not yeah. an accident. Well, how do you think so. Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian got their start? Exactly. Yeah, I mean those. I mean, yeah, they may those may have been personal, but now it, it, it's been a proven technique for a certain segment of celebrity dumb celebrity -dum. Yeah, yeah, that works. <laughs> and, celebrity uh, dumb. Um, yes. <laughs> and it, 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 and it and it and it works. But, you know, but they still have to go through this fake, I don't know why they think they have to go through this fake, oh, I didn't mean it to be public. Well, I, shit. It's a playbook. Otherwise yeah, yeah. then, too, because then they're, uh, then they're slutty. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Like, if they're like, oh, I'm just a woman who enjoyed sex and want to make money off the fact that I, well, I think her, she actually has a solo tape. It's just her. Yeah, Courtney mm -hmm. Stodden's is. She's yeah. not with... 50 60 year old dude from lost which is Ew. for the best but i yeah that's just uh, it's all it's all a ploy but they need to seem demure about their sex tapes i suppose and that's great that she's giving it to charity that's fantastic but don't tell me she didn't get like a million dollar signing yeah. check, check up front she's not getting nothing oh i'm for sure this. <laughs> and see it's you know it's funny this reminds me of kind of some of the work that i do outside of my fun podcast careers that mm -hmm. i have um is when i do outline you know certain campaigns and processes for clients and like literally i'm working with a municipality here in minnesota right now and they're in the middle of a major push and okay week one day one you know send this out mm -hmm. week to oh. day 10 send this i mean i'm sure they have the same thing for this sort of deal oh there's a playbook mm -hmm. there's a playbook. it's a formula Definitely. okay so i What'd have looked find? up boobpedia.com yeah what is it and it says it's a free and user editable encyclopedia of women with big boobs oh use it to look up your favorite busty models celebrities and porn stars even amateurs with big boobs can be included here the most important feature is that all information on boobpedia is provided by users like you <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's got uh i'm looking well i'm looking at some big boobs there are 12 year old boys all over the world rejoicing uh -oh. right now <laughs> boobs, boobs, boobs. well hopefully yeah. they're not listening to this podcast yeah. to begin with True. And they've got uh jane mansfield on the uh on the front well yeah. if there were ever yeah, a famous set of boobs, boobs there would be mm -hmm. one oh, some famous boobs you know do you ever do you, well i love her daughter mariska hargitay mm -hmm. um and you know she's been doing the law and order svu thing forever and i really would like to see her break out and do some other stuff because i think she's a pretty good actress and stuff but i mean how much in her life do you suppose that she has had people trying to see if her rack even comes close to her mom's? I mean, what would that be like living in the shadow of those two things? Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just. <laughs> well, Sorry, the... shadow. <laughs> no, I know. I well, get those that... things would cast a shadow. Yeah. They were big enough. <laughs> no, no. I think that's probably one of the reasons she, you know, she's just got a job. She can pretty much probably, she probably has it down pat nine to five. She could probably just go off and do her right. Like, cause you never hear about her outside of that. No, except for she does PSAs though mm. for, um, awareness against sexual violence and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which I think is uber cool too. The whole mm -hmm. cast gets involved in that, but it's a USA thing that they do. Yeah. That's Very what cool. I mean. I, 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 
I watch that show every now and then, mm-hmm. but I'm just like, oh my god, I I I can't find it interesting when they're constantly <laughs> have abused children. Sometimes no, that is hard, and that's I mean that's what I I'm like, no, no, but there's a but there's a you know I mean that's the whole point of the SUV you know SVU, franchise SVU SVU SVU, 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 SVU big, yeah, different big difference. Thing. Big, big well, difference. they drive them, you know, yeah. Them. <laughs> okay, I didn't find. I, by the way, I looked up Penispedia and it's not there. So, well, we need yeah. to buy that dummy. Mm-hmm. There we go. I mean, w- w- equal rights, right? Mm-hmm. Equal rights and full frontal. Well, they're they're coming out with a new uh, a male equivalent of Hooters, so we're, I think we're really? starting to really it, finally that, embrace the peck equal ones? rights. Um, oh my god! Done text. I saw that. Um, oh god! Pe- does place. it have the word pecker? Please tell me they use the word pecker. No. There's nothing oh, funnier than the word pecker. It was something pecker. I was not actually very impressed. It was this one was across the pond, the one I heard about most recently, and I can't remember the name because I was not very uh, impressed. Oh, with yeah, it. It, just, it was, it, 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 it was English a lot, slang. It was a lot more. Um, oh, wanker, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah something it, like wankers or some yeah, along those yeah, lines. Better PR than actual um, uh, uh, practice. It well, looked like you know mm-hmm. how much. And, and Colleen, you can <laughs> more than anyone relate <laughs> to this. How hard it is to get a Hooters brought into a community, and what the can you imagine one that was male dominated that centered around butts and penises? I don't know. Right, because male as sexual objects is way more offensive so. to everybody. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Tally whackers. Tally whackers. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yep. yep. You know what? Mike, I didn't know if they would have to wear like chest hair nets or how you know oh, no, I don't the see sanitary any chest hair. issues, I see no which chest is very hair. disappointing. I don't want to be served by waxed. They're yeah, you know, they're, they're looking like smooth. twelve year olds. It's no fun. You need some hair. I'm sorry, but the second you call it a tallywhacker, that's the female equivalent of the, for me. It's like I don't want to play with a tallywhacker. No, I'm sorry, no. but that just that just sounds really kills the lady boner, as they <laughs> say. Thank you. I knew that there was something no, that, the that fit. Dry, it just dries you all up. Oh, there saying, you go. Okay. Just, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Speaking of drying up, um, the sex industry is shrinking in Nevada. Nevada. They get mad when you call it Nevada. Nevada. Uh, did, have you guys read about how many brothels are closing in outstate Nevada where, mm-hmm. where prostitution is legal? It's so, so strange. They kept prostitution illegal within the major parts of, well, in, within Las oh, Vegas, yeah. which mm-hmm. is where everybody goes. Well, a couple things. When gas prices hit four bucks, you know, back, you know, in the last several mm-hmm. years, that, you know, because it took a while, you know, to get oh, yeah. out there, they were offering gas cards and things like that. So one by one by one, these things are just dropping like flies and only the biggest and absolute most famous uh, are still open. But at the end of the day, they're saying that um, the illegal prostitution within Vegas city limits is absolutely killing them because they won't enforce it properly. They, you know, they are so strictly regulated out there Mm -hmm. and they have to go through so many things in fact one woman had to go basically through a court battle to get male a male prostitute approved like see once Mm -hmm. again the sexism there fine women fine but to get a man she really had to and then he fell in love and quit (laughs) which you know she blazes a trail for him and then he leaves (laughs) you know was he secretly like Julia Roberts? That's very uh, probably. Woman. I'm sh- uh, I'm sure that somebody sure that happens th- a lot. Right? There was a mm-hmm. balcony and a boombox <laughs> involved. I'm sure. But um, yeah. I mean, so th- so that's that's going on, and they're they're sitting there saying, you know, these these businesses are you know are truly suffering. So I don't know. I just think it's really interesting how lawmakers can get so sanctimonious on one side and then completely choke out business in another you know what i mean and because these are all taxpayers mm-hmm. and they probably are, are more on the up and up than than most other people because like you know colleen there's so much scrutiny yeah they i mean the the amount of uh of uh, uh, permits and stuff that they need and they go through and the, uh, the health forms and and this and that but yeah i mean they I, I, now that vegas is i mean there's a comeback in vegas i mean people are moving there again why you're moving where there's no water i don't know but you know, there, there, there's the, the schools are crowded again. Everything, yeah. And so, of course, as soon as you get more people and you've got more jobs, you're, you know, just, you know, there, there's no reason to drive anywhere if you can just wander down and uh, find a flyer. For sure. Believe me, there's still plenty of folks <laughs> hand out the flyers I as know. you're walking up and down the strip. But I have to admit, it's been a few years since I've been there, but I can't imagine anything's different. Oh no! And proof that there's a trade organization for everything, ladies. George Flint, who is the Nevada Brothel Association president, said the recession has hit the brothels hard, illegal prostitution, where Johns can buy hookers for half the price, but without the security of knowing it's illegal and disease-free is the reason. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Mm Kind of. Now I'm depressed. All these poor business owners getting getting, uh, let out. Okay. (laughs) Let's talk about India for a minute. How often do you call customer service and end up talking to somebody in India? 
what Prob- percentage of the time would you say? <laughs> Probably a large part of the time. Uh, either there, uh, Brazil has a bunch. Uh, Mexico. I mean, there's a you know there's a lot of folks that do the call-in centers. Most of the time, actually, quite honestly, they're pretty impressive at how well they speak. I mean, you know, I just get frustrated that they can't do much because they're they're so far away that you really can't get to the person that you really need to talk to here. Mm-hmm. But um, India is grappling with the sex toy business over there. They are trying to figure out now because you can get anything on the internet, what their regulatory situation is going to be. And it's they can't keep a lid on these people anymore because they're all talking to people all across the world. And so it's becoming kind of an issue over there. And I thought this stat was interesting. You know how big India is, right? Mm-hmm. But so if you look at the revenues here in the U.S., fifteen billion dollars um, in the the sexual wellness, sexual toy category in 2013. Do you agree with that, Colleen? That fifteen billion U.S. would probably <sighs> be about the size of the industry. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you know, as you're going through there, because you're. Uh, well, then again, a lot of the stuff, if you're buying it and using it once and you're, you know, you get new partners and, and stuff like that. And if they're adding in, and I don't know if that includes uh, streaming video or, or, or just yeah, the toys probably. along. But yeah, I'm sure it does a fairly, I mean, you know, a fairly, you know, you know, reasonable amount. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but the industry here in the U.S. is expected to reach $52 billion by 2020. Think about that one. That's like more than triple. Here in the U.S.? Yes. What is I? What's causing that jump? I wonder. That's I crazy. I would assume it's just the fact that the younger generation is are getting it just they're just not freaked out by the idea of, mm-hmm. a, of a vibrator. They're not freaked uh, freaked out. Um, uh, they just have knowledge. If you have knowledge, you're curious. Yeah. And if you're curious, you're going. Th- you know, going through there. It's 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 less and less taboo. I mean, because not only. I mean, look. If you're buying the vibrator and now you're exploring anal sex and you're buying the butt plugs and you're buying the lube and then you go and you just have more things. That's I'm, true. That's true. Yeah. More than just cucumbers nowadays. <laughs> so, <laughs> But, you know, you can still go organic if you must, but still, yes, there's, yes. there's an argument for some of this <laughs> other, other <laughs> stuff. And it's also the stuff, it, it t- some of it tends to be, there's also a... Um, a high, you know, a higher end market for toys too. Mm-hmm. So if you're, I mean, just like movies cost, you know, they, everyone's breaking records, but if you, you know, you have to look at, well, you know, the, the fact stuff just costs more. Silicone costs more, better motors start, you know, cost more. Yeah. So that, you know, the, 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 the products themselves are, you know, are becoming a higher end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and movies used to cost three bucks and now they cost like $15 to go to. So yeah, there's going to be an increase in a lot of different things. Inflation. Mm-hmm. And people mm-hmm. are investing in their vagina. Which Get God good stuff. bless them. Yeah. God bless them. Yeah. No, I just thought that was interesting because the, the issue there and, and Colleen, you are well aware of how there's certain states you can't ship things to, but what they're doing is they're working on their obscenity laws there. And so people, are, what the, the article was about was being U S companies being very careful wanting to expand and getting so much interest from that part of the world, but not knowing whether or not they'd get sued if they were to ship. So it's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they have a lot of other things you should work on and whether or not someone could buy a vibrator though. Do you think mm-hmm. that there, you think that there might be some more pressing issues than that? Really? Yeah. Once again, it's uh, focusing on something that you can, re- you know, pretend you can do something about pretending there's an issue and then going after that because you certainly can't do anything about the fact that a woman can't walk outside of her house <laughs> in many places, not every place, Yeah, you know, mm. but there's, it was a billion people there. I think they've got a few other issues. Yeah. <laughs> How about more toilets? That, that would be good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Better, better. And, and, and I'm not saying anything that you can't just search on NPR and find. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Yeah. Google, or, or Google. I yeah. mean, you don't even have to go mm-hmm. NPR. That's uh, mm-hmm. specific. Do you know who Jonah Falcon is? Uh, nope. Well, you will. I'm, I, I'm going to find out, aren't I? In just a minute. <laughs> he is the man with the world's largest penis. Hmm. And um, he is having trouble getting a job <laughs> because he's famous for having the world's largest penis. So you get Googled and this is what. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Don't, don't hold that against him. Yep. <laughs> and um, so uh, with this one guy um, that was, I, he was on um, the Huffington Post that interviewed him said, yeah, I made this, I interviewed him. The video went viral and now he's all bummed out because he can't get a job. So um, the Daily Show has been reaching out to him and he may be some sort of a correspondent, God only knows, for that. Oh, so well, good, good. It's going to work that's, out. That's kind of cool, huh? I just, as long as he's not like knocking stuff over <laughs> with this swinging member, I shouldn't keep him from being employed. I That's mean, workplace, workplace violence. <laughs> yeah. Well, you think, I don't know, maybe he could sue for 
uh, discrimination or something like you know yeah, but how, yeah, you, yeah you, but, I can't but how do you you know how do you prove that just sort of like you know it's really difficult to prove that you haven't managed to um uh, uh you know hiring somebody yeah. hiring someone because they're too old or too young but you know I don't think it's that big though I really don't really the penis. no 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 the reason is because I'm flipping through an article the other day on uh, fruit flies okay <laughs> oh yeah i know it, it's gonna come back around i'll tell you this and you know they're a little tiny right yeah oh okay, yeah okay. uh, but there's the one thing the fruit fly has that this guy what, what was his name again jonah falcon jonah falcon mm -hmm. um they don't say how big it is in the article right they do not yes but the uh, your, your handy little fruit fly it's tiny little fruit fly has has a penis that is uh 2.3 inches long Get out. Are you, the whole fruit fly isn't 2.3. No, 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 no. Pardon me. The, the, the sperm inside the penis is 2.3 inches long. Can you imagine how tiny and spiraled that is? If a man was to have, according to this article, if a man was to have sperm as long as that, it <laughs> Proportionately. <laughs> proportionately. Okay. 120 foot long sperm. That's not coming anywhere near me. Mm -mm. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I mean, sperm in general, keep it away. But uh, <laughs> especially sperm you can get from across the room. <laughs> but I'm just like, but, so really, the, the 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 human bodies and the fruit fly bodies and the in the, the peoples and the animals they're rather unique, aren't they? Oh my God! Well, you know that explains a lot. We got we were under siege by fruit flies in our house, like from November until January. And you know, probably the bananas that we bought or something. What Once they get in the house, I mean, finally one day I got what I called the periodicals of death. I got like three different magazines and they love to hang out on my, on my uh, cabinets, which are like a blonde, you know, so you mm -hmm. can see them, you know? So I'd go and get six or eight of them at a time. It took me two hours, but I killed everybody except for one lone survivor. And I think he finally died because he didn't have anybody to have sex with. Yeah, there's no place to put his very well, long sperm. Yeah, he probably so, exploded from the giant <laughs> sperm. <laughs> it's got to come out. You hear guys use that excuse all the Blue time. Balls. Oh, baby, if it doesn't come out, you know, I'm going to get prostate cancer or whatever. Uh, but what I thought was fascinating. Talk is, to the hand. Is that, is that this... <laughs> I'm reading this scientific article about invasive species, and then somewhere, on, and then on the end. Well, that's of it, invasive, all right. Yeah, on the, Holy end, on the shit. end of it, they're talking about how big the fruit fly sperm is, and I'm thinking, there is, there's almost nothing that I could run across when I'm searching the web that doesn't somehow end in sex. Right. <laughs> of some sort. There's something always gets wrapped around. I mean. I, oh my god! I mean, just the things that run across my Facebook feed, or the things that I search at, or I, I, oh, it's just. It's all about the. It, it, I swear to God, it's all about the sex most of the time. Okay. Here's a mm. here's a question, and not to not to bring the sobering downer tone onto this, but it's like, okay, people are getting cancer and all that other kind of stuff. How do? Why is it that we know how long a fruit flies spoo is, and we still don't have a cure for cancer? I'm just asking. I'm just mm. saying. Yeah, I, I I cannot. I mean, like, who measures this, and how do you measure? <laughs> Thank it? you. <laughs> what yes, that's what I wanted. At one point. I I suppose they're trying to figure out how I, I don't know how to how to kill them, so you have to know how they reproduce. But that's just the fruit fly has a two point three foot. It's, it's a it's, very I long know, spurt. I know. I we're all kind of speechless. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about uh, this one, man. I got to tell you what, Megan, you're going to have to put the link to the video on the Great Northern Sex pa Cast uh, Facebook page. So uh, it is a man humping the tailpipe of a car. <laughs> I, yeah he's he's doing it he's down there he he he's he went there but what what okay again in trying to investigate this further because you know we definitely would like to be um well, we like to be, be correct and accurate here mm -hmm, at the sex cast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is not an isolated case <laughs> no it's a thing it's a whole thing i'm, I'm assuming that the car hasn't been running because otherwise that would be painful oh yeah hot it, it oh, <laughs> hot sex all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, th there's this guy, and I'll, I'll get you the link on that one. Um, but there's one guy uh, in Washington State, and he uh, he proudly has his picture displayed. He claims to be the king of car coitus, claims to have had sex with more than a thousand vehicles, and his favorite is a helicopter from the TV hit Airwolf. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and he's hugging it in the picture. I kid you not. I'm just trying to figure out the mechanics of it because okay as far as i know most of the tailpipes are fairly close to the ground so they're like are they like on their sides because no, even if you were no. all like on your knees 
I'm confused. No, this Brazilian guy that where, where we'll have the video, and it just looks preposterous. I mean, he's kind of in a squatting position, down, okay, kind of almost looking like he's on his haunches. Mm -hmm. But oh, he okay. literally reminds you of what a rabbit would look like doing it. <laughs> and it, it's like, oh, you know what? This is not going to help you get regular Does sex. Does he pad no. the ed edge of it or anything? Unclear, because thank goodness you really can only see his butt, which is covered still in his pants, because I think he just opened up enough mm -hmm. of it to get... Well, and he might not want regular sex i mean there's lots of people like that guy who had sex with a thousand vehicles and mm -hmm. i'm sure he didn't call any of them the next day mm -hmm. or the mail slots uh-huh or the mail slots hot mail slots mm -hmm. it's it's a thing it's like a pygmalion thing where either um inanimate objects like yep. statues and or um mechanical like that is your fetish you get off on his favorite his favorite love too is his 93 ford ranger splash Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then there's another one. Um, two, there's two. Something's up in Ohio because we've got two pretty, pretty major cases in Ohio of this. Um, he got caught. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to lose it. This is so funny. <laughs> Screwing his neighbor's pink inflatable raft. <laughs> and he begged his neighbor for mercy, said, I've got a problem. He, I mean, and, I mean like, a, like a raft, like. Yeah, you, you put in your pool. It's mm -hmm. you know clear on the bottom, pink on top, or vice versa. Something of maybe that. some mm -hmm. flowers and okay. But he begged for mercy, asked him not to turn him in. He said he was arrested, and the raft was found deflated and ashamed in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Probably full of crabs. You never know. <laughs> um, another one was having sex at the picnic table in public, uh, and this was caught by a videographer. Um, yeah. Uh, and then in Albuquerque, he got arrested for pulling down his pants and humping his own vehicle in the parking lot of a grocery store. There were children present. Mm. Well, some of this I'm trying to figure out whether or not it's like intercourse or more like fraudage. I mean, because I'm trying to figure out like on the picnic table, was there a knot in the picnic table? I mean, see, the, whenever you read these things, my brain just has so many questions. Well, there's only one video, so we will put that one out there and let everybody else decide. <laughs> that is a really good question, though. Where... I mean, is it is it, is it really How do you intercourse or fraudage? A... Yeah, I mean, you know, picnic table. For people who may not be familiar oh, with fra the term fraudage. Fraudage is just rubbing against something for sexual oh, okay. um, gratification. Okay. So, you, yeah, I mean, so I a lot of this I think might, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with, it. I, I cannot, I'm, okay, there's going to be video, but... Yeah, the picnic table. I mean, splinters. The video's only the I know, tailpipe. Just, I mean, that yeah, I understand. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's it's a hole. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to lie. Guys are like, hey, it's a hole. I'm going to stick someone in there, you know? <laughs> it's a tailpipe. That I understand. I'm just, in the scheme of things, I'll take tailpipe over picnic table any day. If you had to, <laughs> what would you prefer to screw? Picnic table? Tailpipe. Tailpipe, picnic table. I don't know. I think I'd go with the raft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm just imagining the noise. It's like rubbing a wet balloon, you know. Just, I, uh, well, you need to make his hair hard. stand yeah. straight up. Because... And you know, it's vinyl, so you could use either a silicone or a oh, water-based lube. That's true. So you, Easy cleanup too. You're yeah, in the pool. pool. You know, mm -hmm. getting the floats out for the lake this summer is never going to be the same. <laughs> just suppose anyone's managed to, you know, the the noodles. They, they, they get holes in them. I'm no, sure so. <laughs> doodle a noodle, Colleen. <laughs> Now that's just wrong. Noodles are much more for women, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, oh, a vibrating pool noodle. Oh. There you go. There you go. We should get a patent, slap a patent pending <laughs> yeah. application out there. Right after getting our website. A after we buy penispedia.com. <laughs> God, we're busy on this show. So quickly before we move into uh, God knows what else, um, there is the Robo Yanker and uh, released at a technology show in uh, Great Britain. And um, the very cute uh, British reporter that was uh, from, it was, you know, live from the conference kind of deal, um, said, oh, look, it's a handy, you know, a hand job in <laughs> handy. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's funny. I like, right, but would you get a handy from a robot? So they showed pictures, and it looks like something that's shaking, and it's like a vagina thing, and it looks like, I don't know. So they surveyed people and said, would you try this? I was surprised to see that 46% of those responding said, yes, I would put my penis in that thing, which if you saw how yeah. vigorous no, it was. The other 50% were lying. So yeah. that's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to. 32% <laughs> admitted it was interesting and 29% okay, okay. said, hell no. But I was surprised that I thought that was a fairly significant number of people that said, sure. 
I really, it, you it, think it should, lying? It, no, okay. it should be higher. <laughs> There's maybe like 2% that would be no. <laughs> and, and those are toys that have existed for, you know, it's not necessarily a new technology. But this one is okay. So no, but, the, but the, what makes this one different is it's a, this cute little robot that kind of looks like a dog really. Oh. And it, it is holding it and it's the robots in control of this. And then it hooks up to a video screen and you can do, you can see a vision. I mean, but the robot is like administering this thing. That's so, the difference. Because we have some, we have some that that thrust and like automatically stroke up and down already. Oh yeah, um, but do, do you have a robot attached to it? No. Okay. See, that's that you, is you what talk we're to missing. Me when you get the robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other folks are just lying. Yeah, they're just mm. lying. <laughs> so we know that you guys have the big uh, Jessica Drake uh, event coming up on June thirteenth. Tell me a little bit more about that. Okay, so it's uh, uh, becoming more and more exciting. People are RSVPing. Uh, we've got it. Uh, we, uh, so that Jessica Drake is going to be in town uh, on the weekend of uh, June 13th. She's going to be at our Burnsville location. There's going to be a seminar. Uh, she's going to talk about some of her favorite sex toys, but pretty much it's going to be a Q&A. So you're going to be able to ask her questions about well, pretty much anything. There's a, n nothing, you know, nothing's really off the table. Cool. So sexual techniques, her career, uh, um, uh, anything. And uh, so there's going to be a, you know, probably do like beer and wine and cheese and crackers because, you know, every, you know, all good sex talks need beer, wine, and cheese and crackers. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she'll be chatting. And then when, when she's done with the questions, she'll meet and greet with folks. And I'm just, I'm really, really excited, which is one of the reasons we're making the Burnsville store all pretty. <laughs> oh, you just need an excuse to decorate. You know, I know well, you. Well, there is that. He does. <laughs> I always get a little nervous. She comes in. She's like, I'm done decorating my house. And I'm like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. It, it starts. <laughs> and it's just very exciting because, she, like I said, I've, I've met her in person a few times now. And it's just been really fascinating because she really is a new the new generation of really sex positive female performers. Um, you know, she talks, you know, not only about sex, but consent and, and just, just the whole package when it comes to sex, not just put this thing in and you will have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a complete package. And yeah. I think that's the, the best part because we, you know, we've never really just been about sex. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it, so she just really mirrors sort of our philosophy really well at Fantasy Gifts, and so having her come down and talk about that and represent our company and her company and all that, um, I'm just thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> well, Megan, how do people find details on the event? Um, we do have them posted on. Uh, actually, I just put it on the Great Northern Sex Cast uh, page on Facebook as well. Um, and it is on the Facebook page under events. Um, I think right now it's pinned, um, pinned to, to the, the top. top. So we have a whole event page that'll give you all the specific information. Um, we've been tweeting it out on the various tweeters, uh, mm -hmm. at fantasy gifts cool. and at GN sex cast. It's so. also, if you go to our website and you're looking for a link to it and you don't have, um, Facebook, uh, it's been linked to our blog. Mm -hmm. So it's listed there. So when you're on a, a fantasygifts.com, you can drop down, hit the little blog, uh, blogger thing, and it will bring you up to our current blog, and it has all the information there. So there's a lot of different ways to find yep. out what's going on. Yep. And we're going to be getting um, flyers made out and um, brought to all the stores and stuff. So really, by I would say by the end of the week, if you are in a fantasy gifts or see fantasy gifts anywhere on social media, like you would have to try to miss <laughs> Jessica Drake because uh, she's pretty pretty big damn deal and we're very excited about it. Very so. cool. It was really funny. We had sent um, sent a whole bunch of uh, um, all the images we used. You know, uh, we sent it to her for approval because if her face name's going to be on something, you sure. know, I want her to like what it is. And uh, uh, she started tweeting out the images and the information before we got the. We're like, okay, I guess <laughs> she, she's okay yeah, with it. Must, I guess that means it's okay. <laughs> that's really you know what when, when our Twitter blows up, we're like, oh, okay, Jessica likes what we've done. See that. That's a really cool business person. And I mean, and her company is like lucky to have her because so many of those people are like, you know, they're too good to get down and involved. And in, you know what I mean? Like that. I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And we've, with. we've had some partners like that where they are, you know, supposed to be on the social media and it doesn't quite pan out. And it's nice to see someone. I mean, I think the big thing is, is she's excited to come here and that really shows and that means it's going to be a great seminar because if she's excited to talk to us then we are going to know that 
she's going to give us good information. It's going to be a fun, fun event. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come down and then uh, we're going to get some great interviews that next day. So we're going to have some really good stuff coming up. A lot of, a lot of guests. We're trying to work out. I'll just mention this before we dive into our little last topic of the day. Guys, we're trying to <laughs> figure out uh, going to the 90s. We've, we have been invited um, by uh, the gay 90s and a lot of the transgender artists there that uh, they do trans erotica on Wednesday nights. So they want us to come down and set up and in such an area where uh, the performers can come by and just, you know, sit in with us for a few minutes. And that particular show, you know, we'll just go. And we'll 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 have the show as long as we've got people that want to talk. And um, Miss Transgender USA is there, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, there's a lot of you know real serious um, things. And our our favorite Mrs. Sin, uh, she bartends there oh, for this great. too, so she's going to be there. But we we just need to get some logistics figured out because I I, I have a feeling that this is going to be a treasure trove of conversation, and I want to make sure that everything is fine. So we'll be watching for that. We'll promo it, Megan. We'll we'll do a shout out when we're getting ready to release that one on all of our Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, definitely. Sounds good. Well, speaking of um, Jessica and all of that stuff, um, kind of in in researching today, um, or yesterday and whatever, some of the different stories. Do you guys remember Tiffany Shepard um, slash who became Leah Lust? She was a biology teacher, high school biology teacher down in Florida, and she had gone on um, a charter fishing boat, and there were some bikini pictures that made it out into the internet, and she got fired due to those. Did you? Oh, no. I don't remember Okay. That. Yeah. I, I, okay. It's sort of familiar yeah it's going through there yeah i remind you of her because this has been a few years now and she's now got several films uh to her credit i'm you know i'm i'm double digits at least if not you know more than that high double digits and uh so her her name now is leah lust and she's uh got a job i guess her acting is you know sort of questionable but she does what <laughs> you know that's not what it's all about in this um she after got, getting fired from that job, um, she sent out 2,500 resumes and still was not able to get another teaching job. And I guess I throw this out here because, you know, we've all talked about it, things on the internet, how they don't go away. But do you, I'm wondering if you guys think that any legal protections will emerge because bikini pictures aren't the same as a porn tape. I mean, now she does porn tapes, but that doesn't mean that she did before. And, you know, she kind of, it looks like her choices appeared to be limited. She also lost her children, custody of her children to her ex because she couldn't get a job. So she, you know, this was a, a desperation move, which I hate to hear that people do this sort of industry. And I think Jessica Drake is completely opposite of this kind of a story um, because they, they have nowhere else to go. But I'm just wondering if you think that it, there's going to be any kind of legal protection for social media exploits and the ability to fire or not get fired from them. Well, I know that in Europe right now and in France and a few other places, um, there is a law called the right to be forgotten. It sort of is going through there. Yep. I believe that you can ask Google to remove your name from search, you know, from from the search engines. But that's in Europe. Yeah, I can't even imagine that with the way that we, with the, uh, uh, with what we've got in the U.S., that there'd be any way. Uh, unless, unless you full on changed the constitution somehow, amended something, well, I mean, which scares whether, me. Whether, whether, whether it's you know right or wrong, it just you, you end up with the good and the bad. Yeah, when mm -hmm. it comes to stuff like that, and I I also do think that at one point folks are going to realize, even though the internet, it's still about you know the fact that it, it, certain folks are I think are held up to higher standards, whether they should or not, it's going through there, what's going through there. They're going to realize that at one point when the entire uh, generation that's younger than us all has bikini pictures on the web, it's going to become <laughs> so what? So what? <laughs> that, I think that's the biggest issue. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it when it becomes so ubiquitous, that no one's going to care anymore. Yeah, I think that's what's going to change not the laws. Mm -hmm. What bothers me about the bikini pictures is to the best of my knowledge and what I could find, she wasn't doing anything illegal. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. It's like not getting a job because you've got too many pictures on your Facebook, uh, holding a red solo cup. I mean, mm -hmm. for all yeah. you know, you, you know, there could be root beer in there. Right. But you, I mean, it, you know, if you, you, you definitely need to think about what's on there, but 20 years from now, it, it's it, since you know, pretty much the entire generation that's grown up putting their entire lives online. Yeah. It, it, no, it, people are getting, you know, when those folks are doing the hiring. Oh, I think that's it's going to, I think, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be less of a deal. They're like, yeah. 
<laughs> but there's a flip side too. I mean, I just um, read a story about a woman. She was a, I don't think it was a teacher. It was like a daycare. Um, she was going to start her first day, job day at the job as daycare attendant. Mm -hmm. And she wrote something on Facebook like, Oh, I'm going to start work tomorrow, man. Too bad I hate kids. Ha ha. And made all these jokes about hey, that's like, not funny though. Not actually. liking kids and whatever. <laughs> yeah. And she was fired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's something that I think companies should be able to do. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, where your personal conflict or conduct conflicts with the, um, yeah, your business I mean, yeah, I mean, rights or what you need to do as I mean, a job. If you're Coca-Cola, uh, if you work for Coca-Cola and you're on your spare time are railing against ca corn syrup, you know, there's a problem there. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or, or, or saying that you're, you're, you know, or you're, you know, you're working for, for anyone. And you, I mean, you, it's going to look bad if, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if Macy's hires someone who is a head of a, um, a Nazi organization. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you make a company look bad, I mean, you know, there was the, uh, I mean, the, the um, I mean, the, the guy up, no uh, the guy that spooged into the coffee was working oh. for, I mean, he was working for a, a you know, a, a company. He made that store look bad. Right. Right. I know you just, you cannot, you know, you really, I mean, you're, per you're you know, uh, it might be easier to find now, but I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, people have been fired for the server. It just doesn't make, you know, now it makes it, you know, makes the internet. Yeah. But I mean, I'm going to fire someone's ass if they do something ass night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't. We, we've done that actually plenty yeah. of times. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot, you know, if, 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 you know, if you're rude, if right. you're, you know, something like that, I cannot have folks that are, you know, are, that are representing my company that are doing things that are, that are against my philosophy. You can, mm -hmm. you can go find some place that, that believes in, you know, believes in that. And, and see, that's, that's interesting too, because that, that is a, an interesting argument and see, I don't want him to change the constitution here. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. I, yeah. that mm -hmm. just, no, I just, mm -hmm. I know. But like when you say that it, it kind of brings in, we're running out of time, but it's then, then you kind of run afoul of, or not run afoul, but it, it, the parallel thing is all of these companies that don't want to provide birth control because they're, they're religious. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like, it's, it's getting messy out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it yeah. is, it is. Mm -hmm. Although I, I think there can be um, an argument can be made for the health differences, like needing birth control. Um, I mean, there's a lot of health stuff mm -hmm. involved, a lot of benefits um, involved for women that go beyond just your your personal opinions yeah. uh, Cause, and morals. Because yeah. the First Amendment, you know, protects you from being prosecuted by the government. It does not protect you from uh, reactions of others. That's true. That's it. And so people seem to forget that. And, you know, you just need to know, uh, you know, what's going on. And when you're talking about health care or this or that, uh, I think, is it in Arkansas or Kansas? The um, Wiccans or the Satanists are, uh, are suing on their severe, uh, their sincere religious beliefs mm -hmm. that they do not need a waiting period for an abortion. Okay. No, you don't. So if your sincerely held beliefs are upheld for birth control, then that person's sincerely held beliefs should be held, should be upheld that they don't need to have a waiting period or they don't need to do this. And so you got to, uh, you know, they may have opened up a very interesting oh, yeah. line oh, of did. reasoning they did. on this. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with be careful what you ask for. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more because again, I mean, it's just like what you said, Colleen, on one, on one track, um, this could look extremely, you know, uh, inclusive. And then in, in another way, use the same idea it could be used to be very not inclusive. And mm -hmm. that's, what's so interesting about the political philosophies anyway. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I can't believe you can't ship a dildo to Alabama. Really? <laughs> nope. No, there were no, yeah, we cannot, uh, I don't think, I think that someone in Alabama can in fact go someplace, purchase an item and bring it home, but you cannot ship it there or buy it there, uh, which is fascinating. So personally, I think they should go and say that their sincerely held beliefs, things that they should not have to travel 300 miles to buy a dildo. Exactly. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll That's hardship. That's undue hardship. It is very <laughs> unto hardship. <laughs> it's just yesterday. I'm really, I've always been uh, uh, 
uh, the more I travel, and I mean, believe me, I, I travel a lot. I love this world. I love a whole bunch of different people, but I love living in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really do. Big enough to have all the fun stuff, small enough to not have to deal with too much traffic and all that sort of stuff. I love it. I do too. And, you know, you can have a whole bunch of sex toys. Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! Well, Megan Vaughn and Colleen Bertino, uh, great job this week. We've got um, some serious, serious guests coming in uh, in the next few episodes. Again, we'll keep you posted on the transgender or trans erotica edition of the Great Northern Sex Cast, which we're going to go and we're going to try to get some video clips. Um, you know, one of the network uh, partners here, Sean Bernard, said we got to get we got to have cameras on this one too. I think, don't you? Definitely. If they're comfortable with it. For oh, sure. we, oh, yeah. Because yeah, we, we got to vote, like pick your favorite. You know, we got to have our own little poll and we, we should get a crown and we should have, you know, I can imagine what that looks. Like. I've got so many ideas. OK, guys, thanks. Have a great week. We'll be back at you next week. Sounds great. Bye.